Coming to the stage now is Lupe Fernandez. Now, Lupe is a writer. And what do writers do? As writers, we take the multi-dimensional experience of life and we boil it down to the page, to two dimensions. His favorite animal is fossils. Oh. Interesting, isn't it? Really, ask yourself, what animal is your... Okay. Um, he is uh, a member of the UCLA Writing Extension Program. He is working on a memoir. The memoir is entitled The Crazy Pain, and he is going to tell us a story from The Crazy Pain. Let's welcome Lupe Fernandez. One Sunday morning, I was sitting in church listening to the minister's loving sermon. But instead of contemplating my relationship with God, all I could think about was Amy and her boyfriend, fucking. <laughs> I loved Amy. She was nurturing. She used to cook me brownies. We'd spend evenings in her apartment talking about our dysfunctional childhood. We'd play with her, her cats, Merle and Baby Cat. She loved me as a spiritual companion, as a friend. So I had this aching, stabbing pain in my head and in my guts and as I'm sitting in church and then, and then I had a revelation. I'd get a gun, shoot Amy and kill myself. <laughs> I drove my Nissan Pulsar out to B&B Guns on Victory Boulevard in Van Nuys. I'd never been to a gun store before, so I, I imagined a tobacco reeking cesspool of of shifty-eyed hoodlums, or maybe scabby-faced buck-toothed camouflage hunters. Instead, I was surprised to see young couples and senior citizens strolling through soft-lit aisles of firearm accessories, listening to gentle country music playing from overhead speakers. Clean, press-shirted sales clerks with, with shoulder holster sidearms waited courteously on customers. I loitered by a rack of shoulder holsters, working up my nerve to approach the counter and wondering, how much did a gun cost? I had about $300 to spend. I was living paycheck to paycheck, so this, this purchase would bounce all my checks and send my uh, credit rating to hell, but after I killed Amy, money wouldn't matter. <laughs> I, I walked up to the counter and, and, and looked through the glass top at the assortment of polished pistols and gleaming revolvers. All the weapons had had labels and price tags ranging from hundreds to thousands of dollars. I, I even saw the Walter PPK, that, that's the gun James Bond used. Uh. The clerk with a goatee turned to me, can I help you? Uh, I'm looking for something for self-defense. Uh. The clerk opened up the display cabinet and withdrew several handguns from the shelves. I'm afraid of guns, I said to the clerk, I might shoot myself. I wanted to convince the clerk that I was a mild-mannered person, not a, not, a, not a jealous homicidal maniac. The clerk mentioned training as he placed the weapons on the glass top. I picked up a, a steel 45 semi-automatic pistol. When I was a kid, my father owned a Colt 45 semi-automatic pistol and a hunting rifle. He, he kept it in a, in a rubber pouch inside his bedroom dresser drawer. I think it was Christmas or New Year's Eve, my father, after several glasses of tequila, got out the pouch, unzipped it, and removed the 45. I, I can still smell the, the sour lubrication oil and hear the parts clanking like, like heavy machinery as he lovingly wiped the, the springs, bolts, and hammers. Watching my father care for his pistol disgusted me. He ordered my mother to drive us out to the city dump in the red truck. After we got out of out of view of the dump of the dump toll booth, he told my mother to stop the truck. He he leaned out the passenger window and fired his pistol twice into the air. The the blast hurt my ears. It wasn't anything like TV gunshots. My my grim faced mother said nothing, but, but back at the house my parents got into an argument. Este es mi pistola, my father said. Uh -huh. This is my pistol. No quiero esta cosa en la casa, my mother said. I don't want that thing in the house. My father insisted on his right to wave his pistol around the house. He dared my mother to call the police. He, he thought she wouldn't do it. My mother called his bluff and the police. Instantly, my, my father turned to, turned to Mush. He, he came out of the living room and sort of sagged on the sofa. Oh, take me away. Take me to jail. A black and white squad car showed up in front of the house. 
My stout mother stood in front of a large cop at the front door. She held my father's pistol by the butt like it was a stinking, filthy piece of laundry. Just take it, she said to the cop. Oh, would you like to make a report? The cop said. Oh, take me away, my dad said. <laughs> you know, I wish, I wish the cop had taken my father away forever. But my mother did not have my father arrested. If my father were put in jail, he'd lose work as a janitor and get fired. Just take it. My mother gave the pistol to the cop. Just take it. I put the forty-five pistol back on the counter at B&B Guns. And then the clerk showed me a thirty-eight caliber Smith & Wesson revolver. It was priced around three hundred dollars. Easy to use, the clerk said. Good for starters. I, I, I nodded and hummed, yes, this would do nicely. I imagined loading the chamber with six bullets, waiting until Amy came home from work at Warner Brothers Studios. I'd knock on her door, she'd let me inside, maybe I'd start a conversation about the weather, and then, there's a 20-day waiting period, the clerk said. What? <laughs> there's a training class and a background check. Damn. You know, I, I didn't want to wait 20 days. See, see, he didn't understand. I was inspired in church to come here. <laughs> so, so I said to the clerk, well, I guess, uh, I guess you don't want to sell that stuff to some crazy guy off the street. Better think about it, thanks. <laughs> I backed away from the counter, whistling softly to contain my fury. I, look, I stared at the walls, racked with hunting rifles and antique guns and flyers for target shooting events. I, I headed for the door and left the polite, brightly lit world of B&B &B guns behind me. Out of the parking lot, I, I, I cursed under my breath. I, I clenched my fists tight, making my flesh turn white. 20-day waiting period? Shit, fuck. This was, this was God's and the state legislature's way of foiling me. They weren't going to let me punish Amy for loving that man. And whenever I, I tell someone how I, how I wanted to kill Amy, that person looks at my face and says, You? <laughs> I find that hard to believe. Yeah. But I understand the motivations behind those news stories of crimes of passion where ex-husband, ex-boyfriend, ex-lover kills ex-girlfriend, ex-wife, ex-lover. Then family and friends and neighbors, they shake their heads in disbelief in those TV news broadcasts and they, and they wonder, how could a person do that? I know why I could have done it. Mm -hmm.